Toka Lake Athletic Conference. Check out the... Welcome, we are live here on Coach's Corner, coming to you from the WSLM studio here on Radio Ridge, uh, 97.9 on your FM dial, 1220 on the AM side, and also streaming live on WSLMradio.com. So we're back for week two, first week in the books, and thank goodness for that. Uh, the kids got an opportunity to play from all uh, three of our county squads, and we'll talk about those games and the upcoming games here this evening as we get things going. want to thank our sponsors here, uh, Eddie Gilstrap Motors, Papa John's Pizza, El Camino's Restaurant, First Harrison Bank, Erstenberger Orthodontics, uh, McDonald's Restaurant, and Meadowview Healthcare. Ordinarily coming to you from McDonald's, but with the uh, COVID conditions, just a little safer to be here in the studio. So for now, that's, uh, you know, that's a plan. Hopefully, for the years out, we'll have an opportunity to get down there, but uh, we appreciate their support uh, nevertheless. Well, we'll start things off here. Talk to uh, Salem head football coach Blair Thompson. And coach, what a tough loss to start the season, but uh, you know you couldn't couldn't ask for anything more. I, I thought out of your kids, you know, you had a, uh, was in a position to win a ball game. Uh, kids come back after North Harrison scored first. You know, we knew North Harrison had a good back, and he proved it during the game. But, uh, you know, your kids uh, done a good job getting stops when they needed to. And, you know, had had yourself in a position there at the end, uh, you know, as the game uh, was winding down. But then, you know, just there was a few little things that happened, and it seemed like they happened at bad times. And, you know, it, it's just one of those things, and it's week one. And like you said, even though we've got uh, a lot of uh, – uh, skilled football players a lot of those kids were playing their first varsity action and uh, you know it's tough when you go out there and and varsity football is a lot different from JV and uh, you know the kids though I thought played really well and a lot of bright spots a lot of good things uh, during the game on Friday yeah you know it was it was definitely a, a tough tough loss and I thought we played real well I thought we played well enough to win and uh, sometimes like I told the kids you know sometimes that happens and and uh, you know, I, you know, looking back, you know, we didn't we didn't uh, play in our scrimmage against Madison. Uh, I wanted to make sure that we could we could have right. week one, and, and I think it hurt us early. You know, they uh, North Harrison had had, uh, had played a scrimmage against West Washington. Obviously, you know, they they're in the same offense, same defense that they've run for the last right. ten years. And you know, we put something new in uh, offensively, and, and we like it. And we think it's going to be good for us. Um, but we uh, we made we were we were. Our first two possessions, we were really spazzing out on, on the sideline yeah. and in the game, and it just uh, you know we had to, we we were so pumped up, uh, we we had to get back down, and that's one of the things that especially um, you know we got we got to continue to preach to our kids is that the football game is a marathon. You know, you get so hyped up for the first quarter or first possession, then you still have three more three more quarters to play. So you got to stay even keel, and you know you can't get out of your position when when you get too excited. But uh, overall, I mean. I, our kids played really, really hard Friday night. Yeah, I thought so as well. And as we mentioned, you know, offensively with the new offense, you just never know what to expect because, like you said, you didn't have a scrimmage. You know, you're, you're coming out there for the, really the first time against somebody else and, and, and trying to do what, what you do offensively. But, you know, a lot of bright spots there. I thought Peyton Arthur, your quarterback, uh, ran the ball really well out of the option, uh, you know, and gained a lot of yards, ended up being our – our yeah, leading sure. uh, rusher right. uh, on the evening, but uh, you know there was a, a lot of great plays, and then you know you, Danny Bowling had the, that great uh, kickoff return. Might have been one of the most exciting kickoff returns I've ever seen. Um, you yeah, know, you got kind of worked up. I heard. I that. did. I, I, heard I, you. I was excited. Yeah. You know, Danny just uh, you know he, he's just so deceiving. There was about six times <laughs> during that play that I thought, oh, he's going to get caught. He's going to get caught from behind. It looked like somebody was coming, and then. He would make a cut here or there. It was like he had eyes in the back of his head and was able to get it into the end zone. And then, you know, later in the, after that, Reese uh, McCoskey also returned yeah. one I thought was going. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, I thought know, I asked him how he got caught. I didn't understand that. Well, that kid had a great <laughs> – I'll, I'll give credit to the North Harrison kid. He had a great angle, yeah, and he, he spotted where he was going to meet Reese, and he ran to that spot instead of trying to track him from behind. And it was just a good defensive play, but nevertheless a good return by – by Reese, so uh, yeah, I mean, I thought we had, you know, that's the thing. You know, I thought we came out of the second half 
returned a kickoff for touchdown. I thought, okay, here we go. The momentum right. was swung our way, and it was like we just couldn't sustain that momentum. You know, yeah. like uh, we went three and out. Or, excuse me, the defense uh, went three and yeah, out stopped against them. North Harrison right after right after that score. And you know, then we moved the ball down, and we ended up getting a penalty or or something else that moved us back. So you know, we just. We were right on the edge, but we never did. We never did put them away. And, and if, if a team like North Harrison, if you don't, if you don't do that, then yeah, you know you're in trouble. But you were talking about the special teams. You know, Coach Whitehorf is our special teams coordinator, and our our kickoff return team was was the best I've seen. Uh, you know, we got guys that. Are, I mean, I I was circling hit hit hit. You know, there was three or four yeah, just huge blocks. Malachi block. Lee got the hit of the week this week on a block. Oh yeah, you know, uh, and he laid a guy out on the sidelines there, and you know that's. You know, it, it, special teams are something that we take pride on in Salem, and and uh, you know it was it, as we can see, it was a difference in the game. You know, either way, both ways, it can be a difference in the loss, right. a difference in the win. But uh, it was a very good, very good start to the second half for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, I thought the kids. You know, you went in down uh, at the half. It was seven to six, um, and you know, North Harrison was doing what they do. You know, just methodical running and uh, you know the, like we said the, the back you, you got to give him a lot of credit he's right a, he's a good athlete hard to bring down and 32 uh, carries yeah, yeah. 32 carries yeah he was their bell cow for sure i said that early <laughs> on before the game started and uh, you know i thought their backup quarterback you know they they had some kids that stepped up too i thought he played pretty well right. the second half come in and and ran the ball a few times and you know so it was just a great game. It was a great game to watch. Uh, you know, unfortunately, the outcome wasn't the way we wanted it, but, you know, you had a chance to win, went in overtime, and, uh, you know, they were able to score there first, and, and then it looked like we scored. I thought we did, and then, you know, it was hard to tell from where we were at whether or not the ball had crossed the plane before it came out of his hand. And, you know, I, I know Peyton was, you know, beating himself up. He, You know, he had another down where you could have, you know, maybe punch that in, but you know, you smell the goal line, you do what you're taught. You know, you try to score, and yeah, and I he mean, did, and the ball just come loose. Yeah, you can't fault him for that. I mean, that's one of the things you, you said earlier. You know, Peyton's the ultimate competitor. I mean, he's a guy that, uh, you know, he's a guy that you want to huddle. He's a guy that, you know, when it's fourth and short, he, he he wants the ball in his hand, and he wanted the ball in his hands in that in that instance. And um, you know, it's uh, and, and you know, we go back to. Like you said, we were down seven six. We come back out and we score. And we go up. They come back and they tie it. You know, then we block a PAT. You know, uh, you know, if we don't block the PAT, we don't give us a chance to go right. into overtime. You know, so uh, the kids just kept fighting. They kept fighting, and uh, you know, that's you know, that's that's all we can ask at this point. And, and you know, um, it, it just it was a really really tough loss, and uh, it's something that you know I know the staff and I kind of beat ourselves up over the weekend of it, and. Uh, you know, unfortunately, sometimes uh, the better team doesn't win the game, and I feel like that was a chance. That was what happened on Friday night. Yeah, I mean, I thought you know yardage-wise and everything what we had, which was strictly unofficial. Right. Uh, but but you know, I thought that was it was pretty close. Yeah. You know, and and uh, it's just a back and forth game the whole night. A great game for the fans to watch and to start out the season. Yeah, but, you definitely got your five dollars worth. You got your five dollars worth. Or if you were, I'll tell you what, there was a there was a heck of a crowd yeah, sitting out there crowd. out in the street. I, we can, I told. Uh, actually, uh, Coach Williamson from uh, North Harrison, he goes, man, for 500 people, they're sure, they're sure making a lot of noise out there, you know. So uh, it was, uh, you know, you could definitely still hear it. And even though, you know, like, and that's another thing, too, you know, it was a, it was a weird night, you know. Yeah, it was. It was. It, we're, we're going onto the field, and then, and we have, you know, 250 people in our stands and people outside the stands. And then, you know, school got, uh, you know, we went, we found out we were going to e-learning about an hour before the game started. And, you know, we lost two players uh, to, to not to COVID, but to, to tracing, you know, right. and, and so it just, uh, it, it's been, it's been tough, but you know what? I told the boys after it was over, I was like, look, we got to play a game we love. Yep, and, and, exactly. and, you know, a week ago, we weren't, a day ago, Who knew? we weren't even, you know, 24 hours earlier, we didn't know if we were going to get to play. And, uh, and that's the way it's got to be the rest of the year. You yeah. know, you just, you just got to take it, take it for what it is. And, and, uh, you know, even though we lost and we're really upset about it, we feel like we let one get away, you know, just the, the, the chance to get to play the game you love and, and be around your, be around your best friends and, and play a game of football. It really, uh, really has a whole different meaning this year. Yeah, it did. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of teams around the area like Brownstown Corden didn't get right. a play. So, you know, I think we're going to see that as the season goes on. We got that situation this week with the Senators, right. you know, um, not having a game, not sure. We'll find out more about that here shortly, but, um, you yeah. know, so it, it's just a, a lot of unknowns, yeah. and, and it's hard on the kids, you know. And I've yeah. I've had a lot of people ask me, say, "Well, how can you know? How can you have sports and not have school?" Right. Well, you know, at the end of the day, 
you know, we don't want to take any more away from these kids than what we have to. Right. And I don't, you know, nobody wanted them to not be able to go to school. Right. Uh, I don't think that's, the, you know, that's the issue. It's just a situation where, you know, you're kind of forced to do what uh, you have to do right. uh, to keep people safe. And, you know, the, the health department and things, that, you know, that comes into play. And, and when they say, you know, you need to call off school for a couple of weeks, then you call off school for a couple of weeks. But. Yeah, that's the thing that's so frustrating as a coach and, and, and with our staff is, you know, we have Mallory, who's, who I've said it before, you know, she's phenomenal and she, yes, she uh, you know, she keeps us on our toes, you know, and uh, if, a, if a kid's not wearing a mask, you know, if, for whatever reason, and, she, you know, they're supposed to have it on, then, you know, she jumps on them and says, hey, look, this, we're not going to get canceled here, you know, and, and uh, you know, we, she's done a tremendous job. I feel like our staff's done a great job and, you know, we haven't had a kid haven't had a kid on our team test positive yet, and but the thing is, you know, we can't control where they go afterwards, or we can't right. control who they're around, you know, and then so it, it's just, uh, you know, it's just frustrating. But uh, like I said, it was a, it was a great night, everything was, except for the except for the, the outcome, you know, right. and uh, but you know, I'm not I'm never gonna fault uh, never gonna fault how hard our kids how hard our kids played, and then they they played they battled to the end, and that's that's all we can ask. Absolutely. Well, this week you move in, on in the season. I have to go on the road first road test going down to uh, Silver Creek to uh, take on the Dragons and a very talented uh, Silver Creek squad. You know, we know they won their their uh, opening game of the season against Charlestown. But, uh, you know, uh, Silver Creek has got a, a lot of athletes and, uh, you know, they're going to be a, a tough opponent on the road and they've got us the last couple of years. So right. I know that's something the kids, uh, you know, probably looking forward to that opportunity to get a chance to go down there and compete with them. and. That's coming up for you on Friday night. Tell us a little bit about what what we can look for out of the Dragons come Friday. Yeah, I mean, one of the things we talked about today is, you know, we, we kind of have a, a chip on our shoulder a little bit because we feel like we got we let that one get away, you know. So um, it's kind of sparked our, our practice this week a little bit and kind of gave us a little bit of an attitude. But, you know, Silver Creek's one of the favorites in the conference, if not the favorite. Um, you know, they returned almost all their seniors from last year, their juniors from last year are seniors now. Um, and they, they have a lot of skill position or a lot of skill players. They're extremely fast. Um, they like to run, you know, jet sweep a lot. That's probably their best, their favorite yeah. play. Uh, they, they just want to try to expose you with their speed. And um, and then defensively, they'll they'll send six, seven guys. Uh, they blitz the house almost every time, and they go, you know, hopefully, hopefully, hoping that you don't get a chance to get the, the pass off before they get there. And uh, it's going to be a tough battle. It really is. And uh, but you know. Uh, I feel like defensively we match up better with Silver Creek than we did with North Harrison. Our defense is structured around speed and quickness, and uh, whenever we play a power team, Scotchburg last year, right. North Harrison this year, um, it gives us fits because we're not, you know, we don't have the the 300 pounders on our defense. We're we're fast and and we want to we want to move and um, and I think that you know. You know, I'll match our secondary up with anybody. You know, so um, you know we got some really talented, we got experienced players back there, uh, especially our corner spot with Reese and, and Seth Call. So, um, but yeah, it's going to be a tough test. You know, I, I, we we got to get something positive early. Um, you know, uh, our kids are. You know, we they believe in what we're doing, but we need we need something positive early to happen, and uh, we don't want to give Silver Creek. Uh, a chance to get up on us early and and, and try to you know, put us away early. So um, it, it's a lot like what North Harrison did to us. You know, we want to control the offense. We want to control the clock. We want to keep their offense off the off the field and um, and then you know it, it get some stops defensively and, and see where we're at come the fourth quarter. Right. Absolutely. You talked a little bit about the defense. I thought you got some great play out of a uh, and and the entire defense, but a couple guys that really stood out. I thought Caden Cologne had a great uh, game the first half. Uh, made a lot of tackles, was in on a lot of plays there at the linebacker position. And then I thought Mason Gilstrap the second half really come up and uh, made some tackles. He he was, uh, you know, I kept saying, I, I probably said it a hundred times, I probably give it more than I did the score because people are always on me about the score. But, yeah. You know, I thought Mason done a great job getting low and making tackles, you know. he. he yeah, he I mean, really when you're tackling that kid, uh, when, you're when you're tackling Neville, if you don't get low, you're going to get punished. You right. know, so I think a couple of, a couple of times early he got in there, and got, got his, his bell rung a little bit, and uh, you know, but uh, Caden was doing a great job. So he was playing our, our weak side linebacker, and uh, whenever uh, you know Porter was on the strong side, so he was taking on the brunt of all their blocks, and then Caden was able to find a find a hole and, and slide in there, and he, he really. Uh, I mean, he led us in tackles. He was our defensive player of the week, and he he uh, he, did, he did a really good job in, in what would be a second varsity start. And right. and then Mason, like you said, his first varsity start. Um, you know, when, 
our defense is designed to funnel everything to our safeties, and and uh, our safeties were making plays two yards deep in the backfield. So right. you know we got a safety who's flying up like that and, and making plays, and you know and Mason's a kid that you know I, I told him today you know if we were in a foxhole somewhere he would be the first one I pick because. I mean, he don't he, he's he don't just you know there's no regard for his body and right. and he, he's gonna have his, his buddy's back for whatever so just uh, just took him to death the way he played the way Malachi played also at safety yes. and um, you know and then when they did pass you know Seth Call was right there when you know it wasn't like he, he came flying up and and he was right there I thought we were gonna make an interception there maybe and, yeah. and run it back but um, you know it'll be like I said this week uh, you know they're gonna they're gonna run jet sweep and and they're gonna test us they got a big they got a big they got a big back. Um, a big fullback, and then they got two uh, two real speedy speedy slots, and uh, then they got two receivers that are that are fast as well. So um, it'll be it'll be it'll be tough, but uh, we feel like we have a good game plan, and and uh, we're gonna go down and see what, see what we got. Yeah, I did, just wanted to mention real quick too. Your JV squad went down to North Harrison, got a big win on uh, Monday night, uh, and played pretty well. Uh, ended up winning that game twelve to seven. Yeah, it was not a real. It was a kind of a defensive battle back and forth, but I uh, thought the, the younger kids played well. They uh, did. And when, I'll tell you what, Coach Thompson needed that win too, you know, yeah. just, to, just to get a little bit, just to make me feel right. a little better. But, uh, yeah, and that's the thing. You know, we have good we have good, good young kids down there. We had to play, you know, we had to play a lot of sophomores up um, in our game on Friday and because we had a suspension and we had, uh, you know, Jose got hurt in the middle of the game and, right. and luckily he was okay now. He's just a sprain and, uh, you know, we had to, we had to bump some of our linemen up, uh, our sophomore linemen up, to give us a, a look. So we had to have some freshman linemen step up in the JV game, and 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 it was a fun it was fun to watch. And uh, the kids played hard down there and got it done. So um, you know, we, we we can't wait till Friday to get here. You know, we're right. we're ready to get back on the field and, and and see what we can do. Yep, absolutely. So the Lions travel to Nor or to Silver Creek. I'm sorry, uh, that game seven o'clock uh, pregame here on WSLM ninety seven point nine, starting off at uh, about 640 or so so uh, looking forward to that contest and uh, you know I know uh, if coach Dean's listening we'll have him call in about any time but we'll continue on and uh, you know we're supposed to rain a lot this week supposed to rain a lot you got hurricanes, <laughs> hurricanes it, coming in. I think yeah the coming hurricanes up coming there in, so and, uh, you know so there may be a uh, it may be a wet field uh, yeah, we hope so that, sure. that gives us a little yeah, bit of advantage so. a little bit. yeah we'll, we'll, we'll hand the ball to Porter and see what he can do back here for yeah, us and so. hopefully get you know them big linemen up front moving the moving people <laughs> forward because right I thought the offensive line played pretty well you they know did. there were some things that you know, happened during the game and some exchanges there, especially center to yeah. quarterback. But, you know, it's tough when you, uh, you know, when you uh, are in that spot and really hadn't been against anybody to that point. So, you know, I'm sure that that's things that uh, you guys have shored up and, and looking forward to uh, come Friday night. So, Coach Dean, if you are listening, you can call in any time, but we'll stay with Blair until – we get that uh, phone call from uh, from Coach Dean from the Eastern Musketeers, but I thought DJ Gilbert played his best game he did play uh, really as, a, well. as a football player, and I told him that too. And um, you know, this zone blocking really helps him because now he right. can he can just step down, and I call him the bulldozer, you know. So um, and there was a couple of plays where he just lifted that nose up and just you know took him pancaked him multiple times, and I think. You know, and that's something too. I think you know we, we're going to get better at that. You know, one of the right. things I told you before we got on the air, it's it, it, one of the hardest things for me that I didn't anticipate was that these guys have been in the flex bone offense since they were in the third grade. Yep. You know, so uh, when you get out in a game and, and and things get hard, you go back to that muscle memory. You rely on that muscle memory, and and there were multiple times in the game where you know we were doing stuff that we did for, in the flex bone right. instead of stuff that we do in this offense, and um, and it's totally different. You know, and so. Um, it, it, I never. It's one of the things that I never thought about, you know. But um, obviously, seeing it Friday, I, you know, we, we we got some. You know, like I told the kids, we watched our film, and there's a lot of things we can correct uh, and get better. It, it, when you're a coach and you, there's nothing you can get better on tape, you're in trouble. But when you exactly, can look at tape yeah. and say, hey, and if we do this, this, and this, we win that football, or we win that football game going away, you know. So um, we did it, and, and we just got to, you know, like I said. Mid Southern Conference is a grinder, man, and, and it it's uh, you know, we, there's no out. there's no no weeks off, and and now you lose the first one, and now you got to be perfect the rest of the way to give yourself a chance. So, um, you know, Creek tried high; they beat Charles down forty to six, which was a surprise to a lot of people, myself included. And uh, you know, so they they're, they're in the driver's seat. So we're hoping we can, you know, that's a rivalry game for them, big rivalry game. So we're hoping we can sneak in there and and uh, be around, hang around until the fourth quarter gets there. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, you know that game. Uh, 
as we mentioned coming up on Friday night, probably going to be wet. Once again, want to remind the fans that uh, if you do have tickets, you know, uh, um, I think the, they said to enter on the uh, what would be the east side or whatever right, of their yeah. stadium. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, going to be a limited number. Need to mask up, um, you know, and come just like uh, last week. But uh, you know, I, I know we'll have a good following down there, and that's one thing about it. A lot of people, a lot of people love Salem football and and football in general, and you know, to be able to play right now is just a, a huge blessing. And, you know, I know the kids are looking forward to uh, week two here coming up, but uh, got to take our show on the road. That's right. You know, like I said, we're, we were hoping that the governor was going to, you know, the mandate is going to be lifted today. I didn't think it would be, but, you know, we kind of we kind of hoped that it was going to be and we could get more people down there. But uh, we're on the road for the next two weeks, and then we come back home uh, for the big Brownstown game. So, uh, you know, we're just taking it one game at a time right now. Like you said, you know, any given day we could, you know, we could lose a kid to, to, to the sickness or whatever, but we hope uh, – Hope we just take it one day at a time and enjoy playing a game of football. Yep. Well, good luck on Friday night, Coach. And we'll be with you here that game on WSLM 97.9 FM uh, on Friday night as the Salem Lions take on the uh, Silver Creek Dragons there from Silver Creek. All right. We're going to pick up, move forward here. Hopefully we got Coach Dean. Is that you, Coach Dean? Yep, sure is. All right, good. I appreciate it. And uh, we appreciate you joining us here this evening once again for our Coach's Corner program week two here in our 43rd season of uh, uh, Coach's Corner. So uh, welcome back to the show. And uh, I know uh, your your Eastern Musketeers uh, with your uh, opening home game of the season uh, on Friday night as you guys will take on uh, the Clarksville Generals there at uh, Musketeer Stadium. And uh, uh, looking forward to that, I'm sure, to get uh, back home, uh, even though the road trip last week wasn't very far away, but it was still on the road nevertheless. It'll be great for your kids to play at home, I'm sure. Yeah, and, you know, just having one game with our belt now and, and just seeing some of the things the kids have been able to do this week. Uh, you know, we're ready to be at home, and we're on the road two weeks with the scrimmage in week one, and uh, we'll be glad to be at home. And you know, just with some of the new things we've had to do as far as wearing masks on the bus and just – you know, taking extra stuff and sanitizer, and it'll be nice to be home. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Just makes it uh, makes it that much easier. Well, a tough we- outing on week one, but uh, you know, uh, everybody knew you know West Washington with a season club, a, a great group of senior players, and um, you know, going out there to Art Sanders Field to open up the season. Uh, just a, a, a tough loss for your kids, but I'm sure, like you said, you get. You get a week under your belt, and now you know things uh, change a little bit. You got a Clarksville squad coming in that uh, was able to squeak out their uh, uh, first game win as they were able to beat uh, um, uh, Scottsburg. So, um, tell us a little bit about what you expect on Friday night, and give us a little insight as to what you, you thought went right for you on Friday night against West Washington. You know, first of all, you, you know Friday West Washington they got a they got a great group and. Uh, an experienced group, and hats off to them. They played a great game. Uh, for our kids, it was an eye opener, and that's that's really what we needed. Um, you know, we looking back and reflecting on on that night, we realized we had two kids that had started last year that played, and um, you know, both of those kids played both ways. And uh, when you only have two returning starters on each side of the ball, and you're playing an experienced group like that, you're gonna you're gonna experience what we experienced Friday, and. Uh, you know, I thought our kids, we played a lot of kids. We had a lot of young kids. Uh, we started some freshmen, a lot of sophomores. And uh, I thought our kids, um, you know, it was an eye-opener. You know, they didn't play the way they wanted to play. And, you know, we, we kind of challenged their toughness and, um, you know, just a little bit of a grit. And they responded this week in practice. And today we probably had our best practice of the year and just finally started to see some of those young guys uh, figure it out. You know, you can try to get them to figure it out and coach that physicality and that you know, just, just kind of flipping that switch and, and getting kind of nasty on the field. And we're finally starting to see that this week. And, uh, you know, it's, if you coach, you know that you can not you can talk to a kid and you can tell them all you want, but they got to figure it out for themselves. And, uh, you know, we've, we've seen that with some kids this week. And, you know, we've really pressed physicality and just being physical on the field and just toughness, mental toughness, uh, being tough physically. And it's been hot. And we have not backed down, and, and our kids have responded well. And, you know, I think you'll see a different team this week. You know, we're still young, but they've, they've grown a lot just from last week. And, you know, I'm excited to see what they can do Friday night. Yeah, absolutely. Well, tell us a little bit about who played well for you on Friday against West Washington. 
uh, give us a little recap of things there that 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 were positives in that game uh, on Friday night. Well, you know, I I, I look at two of our the, the, our smallest kids, but they're our toughest kids, and and that's Dallas Starrett and Marcus Martin. You know, we we relied on those kids to play. They played almost every down of the game Friday night, and um, if you don't know those two kids, they're they're not very tall, but they're tough and. You know, they, they played hard, they played physical, they, they gritted it out, and, um, you know, those two kids played hard, I thought. And, you know, at times, some of our linemen played well, and at other times they showed their youth. Um, I thought Nathan Toysh, you know, as a, a first-time starting quarterback, made some really good throws. You know, he also made some mistakes that you would see from a kid who hadn't started a varsity game. So there were some bright spots. Um, you know, I thought at times we, we showed our youth, and at other times we showed our potential. And I think that's what you got to focus on is, is that potential. And, and you know, there's a, there's a high ceiling there for a lot of our kids that, that we're not even close to. And, and every day in practice, that's what we're trying to reach. And that's what we preached to our kids this week is, you know, we watched film and showed them, you know, this play you're doing this, but this play we're doing that. Like, we can't have that that variation. You know, we can't have you this play doing exactly what you're told and doing a great job and another play you're not. And, you know, just trying to get that consistency and showing them that they're capable of doing it and they got to overcome, you know, uh, whether it's fear or whatever mentally, um, they got to overcome that and just be physically and mentally tough and, and execute on every play. And I, I think we've seen, a, you know, some of a breakthrough this week in practice with some of our kids in that aspect. And I think that uh, we'll continue to see that. You know, we challenge their toughness. Um, because we didn't feel like we were tough as a team Friday night. And, uh, you know, hopefully that shows Friday this week against Clarksville. Yeah, and isn't it exciting as a coach to see that light kind of go off in their head, you know, where where they finally, you know, they figured it out, you know. The, and, and I know with a lot of young kids, as you mentioned, just having two starters on both sides of the ball back that had played any uh, some animal or any amount of uh, varsity time, uh, it's great to see that when those kids start to figure it out. And, uh, and, and I know that with youth, that, that's something that will come along as the season progresses. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's exciting to see that because we know they have it in them. They just got to figure it out themselves. And, and you, like I said, you can tell them all day and you can talk to them, but they got to figure that out. And, and we've started to see some of that. And, uh, you know, what we need to see is that um, – that growth and that that uh, progression on Friday night because the game speed is different and they have to be able to adjust on the fly and, and react and not have to think and uh, we did a lot of thinking on Friday night right. um, against West Washington and and, 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 that, and we expected to, to to have some of that um, so I, I think our kids have done a better job this week we've tried to simplify things you know, we're not doing anything new we're not doing anything different we've just focused on let's get better at what we're doing and uh, you know we feel we feel good about our group. And, and I say that from a, a standpoint of they have a lot of potential and they're great kids, they work hard, they show up every day, and, and that's, we just got to keep, keep at the grind. And, you know, we feel like we're going to be one of those teams that by the end of the season we're going to look back and think, you know, we've improved a lot if we right. keep on this track and keep doing what we're doing. Yeah, I watched a little bit of your film there as well against West Washington. I thought the kids did get better, you know, as the game went on and, and you know, things started to click a little bit and, and I know with the young group, that's that's things that it's just growing pains. You know, it's it's peaks and valleys, and you know, hopefully that as the season goes on, they'll see more peaks than they will valleys. And uh, you got a you got a game this week coming up here at, on Friday night at home um, against uh, Clarksville, and Clarksville a squad that returns some uh, skilled uh, uh, players uh, on both sides of the ball. Yeah, I mean they're they're. They've got some, some school kids that returned from last year that gave us a lot of problems. Uh, we haven't forgotten that. Um, you know, we felt like we, we probably played our worst game of the season last year against them, and, and that's nothing nothing to slight them. Right. We just didn't feel like we played our best game, and, and we didn't tackle, and we kind of got uh, – we felt like we kind of walked into a buzzsaw. You know, they were hyped. They were ready to lose that, that – or in that losing streak, and, you know, we kind of fell in that trap and, and didn't play well early, and, and they put the game away, and that's – you know, we got to hats off to them for that, but – you know, this year's a different year, and, uh, you know, we have to come and bring – we have to, to, to be physical and bring that to them. And I think that, that that's our uh, – that's what we have to do, you know, both both sides of the ball. Defensively, we got to be aggressive. we got to tackle. You know, offensively, we got to get off the ball. we got to be punishing, and we got to be physical up front. Uh, they play a lot of guys both ways. You know, Friday night, we probably played 21, 22 kids uh, on a regular basis. Now, they're young, 
but we played a lot of kids, and, and that's what we plan on doing again is, is playing a lot of kids and, and, and just playing physical um, and tackle. You know, we, we have to tackle, we have to execute, and, you know, with these guys, you know, you can play defense great for three or four plays, and it only takes one play to, to not do a responsibility or, or, or just get lazy or, or uh, complacent, and, and they can make it into a touchdown. So, you know, I think for us, defensively, we have to be disciplined. We have to be focused every play and uh, just tackle. You know, offensively, we're going to try to be we're going to try to be physical up front and just be punishing. Um, they, they lost their uh, a lot of their defense from last year. Their front seven, front eight, whatever you want to look at it as, uh, were a lot of seniors last year. It's a different group for them up front. Um, they're not as big, but they are agile and they play hard. So you know, we have to use our size to our advantage and, and physicality, and and we just want to come at them and and try to wear them down because a lot of those kids are playing offense, and we feel like if we can come at them from an offensive standpoint and, and bring physicality and control the ball and wear them down, that we're going to take a little bit of that pop away on offense. Right, and, uh, you know, talking about Clarksville, what, what uh, you know, what I know you've had a chance to probably look at some film on them and see a little bit from their game against uh, Scottsburg uh, last week, but what do you expect to see from them uh, offensively? What's your defense going to have to do to keep them out of the end zone? Well, I mean, it, it comes to the, the football kid, uh, the Lamar kid, the running back, and then the quarterback. Those three guys are pretty much the, the three main guys. And, yeah. you know, we feel like if we can con- contain them, uh, we'll be okay. And last year we did that at times, but we, we let them reverse field and cut back, and we didn't have guys stay home on the backside and, and maintain lanes and that kind of thing and just wrap up. You know, wrap up, they're, they're not um, overly powerful kids. Not that not that they're weak, but they're not overly powerful. They rely on on you know quickness and speed. Uh, we just got to get our hands on them, grab a hold of them, and, and wait for help. You know, get get them down to the ground and um, just play play fundamental and understand that those type of kids are going to make plays. They're going to make plays. It's just a bend but don't break mentality. Don't give up the big play for a touchdown. Uh, you know, we feel like if we can keep them to short gains and make them drive the football, they'll make mistakes at some point, and, and we got to capitalize on those mistakes. Yeah, as you mentioned, those three kids pretty athletic. Uh, you know, they 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 have a lot of speed, uh, and I'm sure that's something that uh, that that you've talked to your kids about defensively. Of, and, and as you mentioned, just got to wrap up and 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 hang on and and gang tackle there, and you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully, be able to control that a little bit. I mean that's that's the key is you know we didn't we did that at times last year right. but early on you know we we let them um, out jump us for a pass down the middle of the field early in the game to go score a touchdown the next drive we drive all the way down to score and you know we get inside the red zone and get a penalty or a fumble or something and end up turning the ball over on downs inside our own you know inside their ten yard line they get the ball and we have them tackled for a safety we we'll let them spin out of it reverse field and go ninety something yards for a touchdown that kind of set the tone for the game. Uh, you know, we followed that up with a couple picks on offense and, and just, you know, it just snowballed from there. So right. we have to take care of the ball and tackle. And, and I think, you know, that good things will happen if we do that Friday night. And, you know, if weather comes in with the rain, that's going to help us even more, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that game underway at 7 p.m. down at uh, Eastern High School there. And what's a great setting for high school football there. The uh, great place to watch a game. And, uh, I'm sure you're uh, looking forward to being at home. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, like I said, we've been on the, the road for two weeks, and, um, you know, normally you don't like being on the road, and, and then adding on wearing a mask on the bus and, and, and trying to do all these extra things, too, it just makes it even less fun. So we'll be glad to be home and, and be on our own field and, uh, you know, be in front of our home fans. And, uh, you know, it's, it's something we've been looking forward to. And like we talked about last week, you know, we talked about the kids before our, our game last week is, you know, this might be your last game. We don't know. Right. What next week, we don't know what tomorrow holds. So you need to play this like your last game, and, and we'll take that same approach this week. And, um, you know, we have to we have to come out ready to play. You know, I saw our kids were a little intimidated last week, and um, it showed. Um, and and we've, we've made a point as coaches to make practices really difficult this week and to where Friday night's going to seem a lot easier than what it has been in practice because it's been hot. We've been, we've been on them. We've worked them hard and, uh, you know, and they've responded in a positive way. And, and, you know, if we see that on Friday, I think, you know, good things are going to happen. Yep, absolutely. Well, Coach, good luck on Friday night as the Musketeers take on the Clarksville Generals there at Eastern High School, as we mentioned, that game, 7 p.m. Uh, pregame on the radio here 
WSOMradio.com. Uh, uh, we'll kick off about 6.40 or so. So uh, good luck, and, uh, and we wish you the best this week. Thanks. All right, thanks. Coach Dean joins us here on Coach's Corner. We appreciate him uh, calling in. So we'll we'll await Coach Nance's uh, call here and uh, move on uh, and talk a little bit of West Washington football coming up. But I uh, want to mention, too, the Reds-Brewers game that was set for 8-10 uh, right, right behind this broadcast has been canceled for tonight. Um, not sure, I guess, probably due to the COVID uh, conditions, but uh, nevertheless, that game will not be on uh, WSLM radio this evening as they've called that uh, major league game off. And boy, that's weird to watch a major league game and look look in the stands and not see anybody sitting there. It uh, you know it's it, it's different for high school football, but at least with with uh, you know 250 on a side, it looks like somebody's there. But uh, you know those games are just uh, weird. To, Weird to watch and not see anybody in the stands. Want to thank our sponsors once again. Eddie Gilstrap Motors, Papa John's uh, Pizza, El Camino Restaurant, First Harrison Bank, Erstenberger Orthodontics, McDonald's Restaurant, and Meadowview Healthcare here as we move on with our show. And hopefully this is Coach Nance. Is that you, Coach? Yes, it is. Absolutely. We're glad to have you back and appreciate you uh, uh, being patient with us here and calling in to talk to us a little bit about uh, week uh, number two, and we'll talk a little bit about that week one game against uh, Eastern Musketeers as we uh, just finished up with uh, Coach Dean. But uh, congratulations on the first win of the season. I know, Thank uh, you. I know you guys were excited, uh, you know, too, as well, like the other two county schools, just to, just to be able to play the game that you love. And, uh, you know, that means so much to these kids. And as I mentioned before, you know, I had a lot of people ask me in the last week or so, you know, you know how come you know we're we're playing sports but yet we're not going to school and you know I think I think the answer for me you know is pretty simple it, you know we don't want to we don't want to take any more than we have to away from these kids and you know give them an opportunity to do, do the things that they love and the things that they've worked so hard to uh, to get to that point and I think uh, you know I think uh, everybody done a great job uh, doing what they've had to do to this point and uh, stay safe and uh, hopefully we'll be able to continue on yeah so the you know what I would say is athletics um, and other extracurriculars like drama band whatever it may be yeah. ultimately they're about academics yep. the reason you have the extracurriculars is because that's how you get um, your academic performance. You know, a lot of folks don't know, 80% of our team last year had a 3.5 GPA or higher. That's great. Um, and you compare that against the, you know, uh, you know your, your, your other students that aren't involved in anything, right. don't have things, don't have people checking in on them, saying, hey, did you get that grade up? Hey, I talked to a teacher today, you're having a problem in this class, let's work on it. When they don't have that level of accountability, you know, you're going to have some that are going to achieve no matter what. Right. But there's another select group, you know, at the battle of school just showing up. And if you got that extracurricular, you got weights after school, you got football practice, or you got band practice, you got drama rehearsal, something along those lines, it's going to make you come to school. And if you got somebody asking you about your grades, you're going to perform better. And so the reason extracurricular, it's not that extracurriculars are more important than academics, because Anybody making that argument, you know, is crazy. Right. That Absolutely. the extracurriculars support the academics, and that's why it's so important that we play. Well, that was a great, great uh, way to explain it, Coach, and I appreciate you saying that because that is a hundred percent spot on the way that uh, the way that things work, and it gives those kids something to to look forward to, and it gives them, you know, a good good reason to. To, to work hard and it teaches them a lot of things about life as well so we know that that's that's the case with the extracurriculars and I guess uh, my next question for you is uh, the question that everybody wants to know I know your your opponent this week uh, elected not to play on Friday night as you guys were scheduled to take on Crawford County down there but uh, you know where do we stand right now as far as what what your team's looking uh, looking for on Friday night you know we are we are currently looking for an opponent. Um, you know there's a lot of there's a lot of flux that happens on a day to day basis, right. and um, we're we are trying to find an opponent, and we're going to be working all the way through Thursday to um, to try to get an opponent set up. And um, you know our kids. It, you know the good thing is about eighty five percent of our practice time 
we're internally focused. We're focused on taking better steps, making quicker reads, running better routes. We're, we're focused on ourselves. Right. And, and less so on, hey, this opponent, they do this, do they do that. You know, we do that, obviously. We prepare for our opponents, but we're internally focused. So we're preparing to go play a game right. like we would any other week. And, and, and that's been hard, right, because yeah. normally you've got somebody that you're focused on. And, and right now we don't know who that person is, but, you know, we're hoping that something materializes next week and, uh, and we get a chance to go play. Because I tell you what, these, these kids have they've earned it, you know. Um, the, 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 not only the, the sacrifice that every, every football player puts into, into being a football player, all the weights and all the things you give up in order to play this game, you know, but with these kids as well, there's, there's something special about, you know, every moment's precious, every play's precious, and uh, I think these guys know that better than, better than most. Right, right, and, the, and the, that group of kids has battled through so much, uh, you know, to this point, and uh, we just hope and pray that, you know, somebody out there, you know, isn't playing a game on Friday night or there's a situation similar to what you guys have been in to where you can, uh, you know, schedule an appointment, opponent or get somebody to, uh, you know, to uh, to take you guys on to come Friday night. So we got a couple days here. and Hopefully if anybody out there is listening, maybe some other coaches from around the area, and I know you guys have been desperately searching for someone to play and Hopefully that'll come come to a head here uh, in the next day or so, and and you guys will be able to play on Friday. Well, I'll tell you what, push come to shove, Bubba. You come out to our standard <laughs> field. We'll get you fitted up in some pads, <laughs> and uh, we'll at least have a game that way. How'll that work? I'm like that old country song. I might be good for one play, you know, and that'd be about <laughs> it. I'm as good for one play as about as I'd be. You'd have to have a. Uh, you're, you're better. You're better man than I am. I, <laughs> I think I put my pads on, and I need to. I need to coach. I need a break. You'd have to <laughs> have a barrel. Pad, so. You'd have to have a big a barrel of oxygen. They're a lot tighter than they used to be. I'll tell you that much. Uh, they got these sleek fitting jerseys now. They're. Yeah, I'm not sure I could squeeze into one of them. <laughs> That'd be tough. <laughs> and you'd have to have a lot of oxygen and definitely have the ambulance there. Uh, on okay, the yeah, we'd, we'd have we'd have the paramedics <laughs> on standby, yes, sir. Yeah, that that would that would be a given for sure. But uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully that you know somebody out there you know isn't uh, playing a game and you guys get that opportunity because you know we don't you know it's tough on the kids and we want them to be able to. To play a game on Friday night, and yes, uh, hopefully that'll yes, that'll sir. be the case. Tell us a little bit about the game Friday and who uh, who really stood out for you. I know it was a total team uh, performance and a great win for your your squad. We knew going into the year that offensively, um, well, on both sides of the ball, you guys were going to be really good. But uh, um, you know, it, it it looked like a pretty dominant performance from your kids. Yeah, you know, we've we've been on the other side of this where you got a senior laden team right. comes in and you're young, and, and we've been on the other side of that. And you know, hats off to Eastern. Um, you know, kids came out, they competed hard. You know, they, uh, you know, I really give their coaching staff some credit. They were getting into some trips formation, forcing a check out of us, and then they were working that backside to Brant Ferris and. Uh, uh-huh. You know, able to get the ball moving and get some first downs out of that. So, so hats off to them. Um, you know, our our kids. Uh, obviously, I got th- there's a bunch of three and four year starters out there for us. I mean, these kids have been a lot of these kids didn't ha- never played JV because we put them right in day one as a freshman. So, and now they're seniors, so they they've got you know 36 starts underneath their belt. Some of them, so right. they they're in good shape. You know, your, your usual suspects played well. You know, we are all state guys. You know, Jake. Jacob Strange is um, is another other type of animal we haven't really had at West Washington. He's six foot six, two hundred fifty pounds, and can catch the ball and run. So uh, he played extremely well both sides of the ball. Obviously, um, Holden Bowsman, yeah. uh, our leader, and uh, uh, just a, one of the best we've ever had to uh, put on the Senator Red, White, and Blue. But I actually want to highlight two guys that that maybe the average fan wasn't paying attention to: uh, Parker Green. Uh, I think some folks know Parker, but right. Parker makes a lot of noise on the basketball court, but he's, he kind of takes a little bit of the backseat on the football field. But he played really well for us, came up with a pick, had a couple of big catches, caught a touchdown pass. Um, and then on the defensive side, I want to highlight Andrew Lewis. Uh, Andrew was one of those guys, when we lost all those D linemen last year, Andrew's one of those guys that, you know, started the season, he wasn't necessarily a starter, but he kept with it, kept getting better. And if we didn't have him on our team, you know, we're in danger of not winning some of those championships we won. And, and now he's a senior and coming out there as a full-time starter, and uh, he played extremely well in this game. 
Yeah, I was able to watch a little bit of that film, and it looked like there was just a lot of great, uh, great plays, uh, you know, team-wise, but also individually. It looked like the kids were, were ready to go, and, you know, as a season team, as you mentioned, as you guys are with a lot of a lot of kids that have played a lot of varsity football, uh, you know that's just great to see and great to great for them to have those opportunities and and to get that first win of the season and hopefully hopefully somewhere out there we'll we'll find an opponent for week two here. Now, yeah. Now, now, now the other thing I'm going to say, Bubba, is, is yeah, yeah, we're seasoned. Yeah, we got this experience, but you know, and and the guys know this uh, that are listening on the radio tonight. We we are not going to be able to win week in and week out with the amount of penalties that we had. I think we had 15 penalties for 150-plus yards. Um, so, uh, you know, that's been a big point of emphasis this week, making sure we tighten up that stuff. Right. And the hustle plays, you know, you're going to get a hustle play and get a penalty every now and then. Uh, but, you know, we've got to commit. to There's going to be there's gonna be games we're going to have to win. We're making that many mistakes. Uh, we're going to be unable to do it. So, right. um, you know, we, we've still got a lot of work to get done. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's – the season goes on you just look for everything to kind of fix itself and you know the kids know what they did wrong it's just a situation where um you know you, you put them in that in the game situation sometimes you know the things don't click and and i think as as the season goes on it seems like that typically gets better but a lot of times in that season opener you know things uh, you know kids haven't been used to being on the football field and sometimes you just get a little over aggressive and things you know go the wrong way and you see the flag but uh, you know hopefully i know that's something that you guys will, will get shored up here heading down the road yes sir yeah absolutely so um you know i i, I really planned on talking a little bit about week two here but uh, you know unfortunately that uh, that hadn't come to a head yet and not knowing who you're going to play i think you made a great point about the kids you know just going out and working and focusing on what they do and and fixing the things that, that that maybe they did do wrong on Friday night and just, you know, hoping and praying that, you know, somebody will come along and we can put a game together for you. Yeah, you know, we're um, we're looking at tomorrow. Um, you know, tomorrow we may have some rain move in, so we'll, we'll yeah. probably do a practice in the uh, Philip Bowsman Athletic Complex, the new facility we've got out there uh, right adjacent to the field house and uh, getting some work in there um, and just continuing to focus on ourselves. You know, you, you've, taken, you've taken the same steps and thrown the same passes a thousand times. Well, you know, are you pushing yourself to get better on that thousand and one rep, right, thousand and two? Are you still trying to get better, getting every inch that you can out of your ability and your talent? So, um, you know, that's what coaches do. And uh, we, we're lucky to have a group of kids that, you know, when they come, they come to work, right? right. You know, practice isn't always fun, but – they understand that putting in the work now uh, pays dividends down the road. And, uh, you know, as a coach, you can't ask for much more co- uh, coaching a group of kids that understand that. Yeah, Greg and I were looking uh, looking over some of the schedules from around the state, and we did notice that there was a team, uh, Sheridan, it looked like, had an opening uh, on Friday night. So I'm, I'm uh, not sure. So, and and what, I, what I can tell you is we if, if as soon as a – because on the, on the John Harrell website, they usually update that pretty quick. And yeah. We check that. We check the Great Iron Digest. If a team opens up, we're contacting them. So, I see. Um, you know, we we had a, we have a, every. It seems like every twelve hours, we compile a new list of all the teams that have open <laughs> games and try to go find one that we can go play. You know, unfortunately, a lot of those folks um, they're not playing because they're yeah. quarantining themselves. You know, so right. we're just uh, you know continuing to be hopeful and and hopefully find something that shakes out here. Uh, next 24 hours yeah yeah that's all you can hope for and hopefully that that will you know come come to a point to where somebody is available and uh, you can get a game under your uh, belt week three if if for some unknown reason that uh, you know you can't find an opponent uh you know let's see who, who do you guys have on week three uh we have the mitchell blue jackets mitchell. on yeah. week three kicking off our conference slate and uh and getting going in conference play which is always a big deal for us um, we got Mitchell coming to our place uh, next Friday, and so um, you know, I'll be honest, I haven't seen a lick of film on them, and uh, until until we know for certain that we don't have a game uh, this Friday night, we haven't. We're not even going to take a look at those guys. We we are very much a week by week team, and you know, whoever we're playing, it's, it's the Super Bowl. That's the one we got to win, and we don't even focus on anything down the road. We don't talk about. You know, hey, wait for this matchup, wait for that matchup. It's always, you know, who do we have? Um, 
you know, on Friday night. And so until we hear otherwise, the, the Blue Jackets are, you know, they could be running any type of offense. I have no idea at this point. So. <laughs> All right, so just uh, just waiting to see what happens here, uh, hopefully in week two. So hopefully you'll get that situation, and uh, you know maybe there's somebody out there listening tonight that uh, will hear that, and uh, maybe maybe we can uh, put something together. That's I'm sure everybody at the school is working for that, and uh, you know uh, hopefully that'll that'll be what'll happen because uh, it'd be great for the kids to be able to play here on Friday. Hey, uh, Bubba, let me give three more shout-outs if we sure. got some time Sure, yeah, we here. got plenty of time here. We got three seniors that um, had their season end last year, right. and they went through a rehab process, which is never easy, uh, going through that rehab process. Uh, Bobby Stevens obviously went down week one last year, and um, we had Mike Leach who went down week five, and then Charles Madden uh, who went down the first round of sectional. And... All three of those guys worked hard in the weight room, got themselves back in shape, uh, you know, took the surgeries, came out of the surgery, and they've done all the right things that they need to do to be able to play Friday night. And all three of those guys, you know, they're, they're three of our best players and uh, performed performed very well Friday night. So I want to give a shout-out to those guys, and congratulations for overcoming adversity and, and getting yourselves back on the field. Yeah, absolutely. That's always great to see, and, and thankfully they all three were able to – to come back and play, and it wasn't a career-ending injury. They were able to to get themselves back and and come back out to, for this season and and be a part of that uh, that team as you guys move forward here in 2020. And we just, you know, like I said before, I think when we went on the air, it's just a, you know, it's a it's a day-to-day, week-to-week type situation right now. And uh, you know, as you mentioned, you know, you just. You just go out and, and do what you do and try to get better at the things that you do, and, uh, you know, hopefully the rest of it will just fall into place. Yes, sir. That's all. You know, you, you, we talk to them a lot. There's, if you worry about the things you can't control, you're going to drive yourself crazy, yep. and that's in football and that's in life, too. you got to focus on the things that you can control, and those things you can't control, you own them. Right. You make sure you do everything possible to exert as much influence over the things that you can control, but equally important is learning – to ignore or accept those things that you can't control. And and right now we, we don't have a lot of control over who our Week 2 opponent's going to be or even if we're going to have a Week 2 game. Right. Um, but you know what we can do? We can keep getting better. And so that's yeah. been our focus. Well, and I think that's a great point, Coach. And, uh, you know, we wish you guys the best of luck uh, moving forward here. And as we mentioned, hopefully, hopefully something will come together here for Week 2. If not, you know, uh, I'm sure you guys will keep working and be prepared for uh, and start working on that next week if if you don't get to play but uh, you know hopefully hopefully something will come together that's that's what we hope for and uh, you know we just we we wish that for the kids for sure yes sir yes sir well thank you for joining us once again here tonight on coach's corner as uh, we're just about out of time got a few uh, bills here we need to pay at the end so uh, appreciate you calling in and uh Hopefully we can uh, talk more and hopefully talk about your week two opponent is what we hope for come next Wednesday night. Yes, sir. We're right. hoping for it. So I uh, appreciate the appreciate the well wishes, Mr. Abbott. Okay, thank you. We appreciate it. Right. And uh, congratulations on that week one win and uh, looking forward to uh, watching the Senators here as we go uh, further down the uh, schedule here in 2020. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. Thanks, Coach Nance. All right, Coach Nance joins us here on the uh, Coach's Corner program this evening as we've been able to talk to all three county coaches. And we're just, we're blessed to be able to do this, and we appreciate those guys. I mean, without them taking a little time to call in and, and talk to us about it, and I know folks like to hear about high school football. It's it's a big deal around here, and it has been for years. And, you know, we, we're just blessed with a, a great uh, coaching staffs at all three schools that are very, very accommodating to us here on the radio and allow us to uh, to bring this to the fans and you know what a great uh, great group of people here in the county that support these kids and you know I think we've talked about this a lot over the years it's you know it's all about these kids and what they do and I thought coach Nance said it really well about the uh, extracurriculars and how that uh, you know helps kids focus on uh, school work and uh, you know I know with the e-learning going on right now, I know it's I know it's frustrating. It's it's frustrating for a lot of people, a lot of parents. You know, it, it's tough to to deal with that because you're not 
you know, you're not used to being a teacher, but we're, we're blessed with a great, great staffs at all three schools. And I think they've all done everything they can do to try to make things work to get these kids the education and also the extracurriculars that they need to, you know, uh, make themselves prepared for adulthood. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, that's that's what it's all about. And we just appreciate all the effort that we get and the support here in the county from uh, all three of our schools uh, for trying to make that happen. So just a quick recap here as we uh, wind down our program here this evening. Uh, the Salem Lions will be on the road on Friday night as they travel down to Silver Creek to take on the Dragons in that Mid-Southern Conference uh, showdown. Uh, 7 o'clock start there at Silver Creek. Uh, we'll be on the air 640 with uh, our, uh, our pregame show. And I uh, want to give a shout out to my son. I tell you, I, I try not to brag on on my kids too much but i'm like any other parent i'm proud and and uh, i tell you i kind of threw my youngest son to the wolves on friday night and and he joined me in the press box to do uh, to do the game and uh, i thought he'd done a really great job for his first time out i i told him after we were done i said you know camden you, you know you done better than i did the first night that i did the games you know and he was just very calm after we got things going done a great job with our stats and you know it's uh it's not the easiest thing in the world to do to be honest with you i'm not trying to blow smoke or pat myself on the back but you know it, it's preparation and uh you know he come into that deal with little or no preparation and i'm proud of the effort that he give and and the uh the insight that he put into the game was uh was very pure and very honest and i thought he'd done a great job with that as all our announcers do for for all three schools and we're just blessed to be able to uh to be able to bring you the games and just blessed to be able to play the games right now so i think that's the that's the key at this point that you know with with everything that's going on you know it's it's great to have some kind of a, a few hours of what we know is the norm and, and friday night football is about as normal as you can get and uh, i think uh, i think we're just blessed to be able to do that so Hopefully that will continue. We just hope and pray that that's the situation. I um, want to thank our sponsors again here before we go off the air. Eddie Gilstrap Motors there in Salem. Steve Motzinger and his crew uh, just do a great job. Been a longtime supporter for uh, high school sports here and WSLM radio. Also Papa John's uh, there in Salem. Uh, you know, done, do a lot of things for the community and help people out. El Camino's restaurant joined us a couple years ago and we appreciate all their support and their help that they give us here on the air first harrison bank as well erstenberger orthodontics meadowview health and rehab there uh, in salem and also mcdonald's restaurant which uh, typically this show we do live there at mcdonald's on wednesday nights but uh, at this point with with everything that's going on we've just uh, felt like um you know we've lessened the curve a little bit to uh try to do things and we've we've tried to do it here in the studio so hopefully we'll get back to that normalcy and we'll be able to do that coming up down the road so that's all the time we've got tonight so for greg white this is bub abbott we say god bless you and at this time we'll return to our normal programming i want to remind everybody reds and brewers called off tonight um, that game has been canceled we were going to have that for you here on wslm radio but we'll uh, We'll, we'll go into some kind of program, some music maybe, and uh, just appreciate everyone tuning in. Be safe, and God bless you.